But let me help you to understand another type of structure that will be not just valuable, I believe, for you when it comes to this whole business thing, but valuable for your entire life, right? You can look at it holistically on how it can impact your life, but more specifically right now, I want you to look at how this impacts you and doing this business and making money, okay? Um, it's taken from a five-day workshop that I do called R More, and the structure is called MOST. You'll definitely want to write this down. M O S T T T. And what this is is a structure of thinking, right? A structure of thinking that will allow you, I believe, to be more effective at whatever it is you decide to do. And what we have here is different areas, and each area is represented by a word. With each word, we ask and answer a question to move forward and to make progress. So the first word is mission, right? And the first question is the question that I already asked you earlier today. Why must I win? Why must I win? Why must I win? That, the answer to that question provides you the fuel to do things when you don't feel like it. To have your feelings to bow down to your commitment versus your commitment bowing down to your feelings. We have to have that reason why is this important, because you know you're going to be challenged, you know those challenges are going to show up, but you're going to need that thing that's going to help you to bounce back with that level of resiliency that's necessary to move forward. So we have to get really connected and in touch with why, for us, this is a must win. Is everybody following me here? This is the fuel. Without the fuel, there's nothing. Let me ask you something. You spend $250,000 on your car, there's no fuel in the tank. How far do you go? Does it matter the value of the dream? Does it matter how much, uh, how much potential you have? If there's no fuel in your tank, nothing will be accomplished. I'm not just talking about physical energy. I'm talking about that thing that comes from your core, from a cellular level that's driving you. That's the reason why this must happen for you. Get in touch with this every single day. It's not about, well, a few years ago you had this idea. It's no more different than trying to go on last week's gate to, uh, tank of gas. When you run out of gas, you have to do what? <coughs> you have to do what? You have to refuel. How often do we refuel in our lives? I think you should be refueling every single day. Reconnecting with why this is important so you don't get out of touch. Write it down, put it on your mirror, have it in your cars. I have, the, I have the reason why I do what I do written so I can constantly connect with it on a regular basis because we know we all get challenged. I mean, without question, we get challenges and challenges and challenges. You know, it's not about are you going to be challenged. The question is, what part of you is going to show up when you're challenged? That cowardly part, that's spineless, or the person that has a spine of steel that's outrageously courageous? Both exist inside of us, but the one that we nurture the most is the one that's going to ultimately show up in the face of those challenges. And to be courageous, we need to have that reason why to be courageous. So we have to have an answer to the question on why we must win. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, the second question that we go to follows the word operation. Operation, ask and answer the question, where can we win? Now that we know why we must win, we now need to know where we can win. Because all competition happens at a very specific place and at a very specific time. We don't win everywhere. We win in very specific places, right? So if you were to run east to see the sunset, how many in here would be effective if you're running east? What if you had really good intentions? <laughs> what if you were practicing the law of attraction? What if you had the absolute best sprint running trainer or long distance running trainer so you had great technique while you were running east? Would you see the sunset? No. What if you had this gorgeous suit on, ladies? I mean, the shoes were matching. It was just gorgeous. Would you see it set? Yes or no? Yeah. What if you had this outrageous mix of Red Bull and Gatorade and it was oozing out of your pores? Would you see the sunset? No. But if you were to run butt naked west, how many would see the sunset? No. Everybody. See, here's the thing. If you do it in the wrong place, you'll never have enough resources to get it right. You do it in the right place, it doesn't take nearly as many resources as you would have thought. Where can we win? See, to go in the wrong place and do it and to work hard is to be counterproductive. It's what we call counterproductive persistence, right? Because you're working hard is something that ain't hardly work. And I tell people all the time, work smart then work hard. The reason why is because we don't want to work hard doing dumb stuff, right? So working harder and harder and harder and harder doesn't really mean anything if what you're working hard at isn't working. What we have to have is the ability to have enough awareness and feedback from our environment to understand that it's not working. Listen, let's not get confused here. 
There's a difference between something not going to work and something not working yet. All that comes back to is our structure of thinking. The negative person, this is not going to work. That's negative thinking structure. Positive thinking structure is not working yet. You see the difference? Yes. The person that says this is not going to work, they give up. What they do is what I hope you don't do. Never let a wrong turn turn into a U-turn. Right? What happens is something gets messed up, and what we do is we turn around and we give up. Right? That's not what we want to do. How many here have kids? Yeah. Right? Remember that day your baby was trying to walk? <laughs> and the baby fell down? Did you go, oh, Lord, my baby ain't going to be a walker. <laughs> oh, why me, Lord, why me? <laughs> my baby ain't going to be a walker. Was that your reaction? No, no. You went over there and was like, ooh, you started to help the baby, right? So why is it we have an opposite reaction when we do something, we kind of fall down all of a sudden, Lord, I'm not meant to be whatever. You know what I mean? See, it seems like it's different for the babies. It isn't a difference. It's still learning. You're not losing your learning. We learn more from our mistakes than we do from anything else. So there is a difference between something not going to work and something not working yet. How we perceive that and our perspective on that, our thinking, talking about our perspective, going back to what we talked about earlier today, is all based on our structure of thinking, which is tied back into our what? Our I, identity. our identities. Because see, here's the thing, if you don't at the core of who you are, who you see yourself being and who you see yourself becoming, believe that's possible for you, you will find anything and everything to confirm that it won't work for you, even if you have to manufacture it. Are you following me? And anything that will show you otherwise, you will invalidate. All right, so with that said, what we want to do is make sure we are clear on where we can win. Where we can win. Where we can win. Now, we understand what everybody else is doing, that's great. But for us, when you look at a, um, like an athletic team looking at the film of a team they're about to play, or a boxer looking at the film of somebody else, what they're looking at is where they can win. They're looking at their strengths, they're looking at their weaknesses, they're looking for and to spot opportunities. This is where we can win. What do you think the coaches are doing? It's a chess match of who can overmatch the other person. And that right there is the key phrase, overmatch, where you can be a, bring a greater amount of resources to your benefit to the game, to the competition. Right? And that's one of the things you're going to learn tomorrow when we start talking about how we position our sites to be able to succeed so fast for so long. Because what we look for are those angles of attacks. And all of those angles of attacks are where we can win. That's all it comes down to. Where we can't win, we don't care about. Because one of the criteria to be successful in any business when you're talking about marketing is that a market has to be, one, reachable, and two, it has to be profitable. You have to be able to reach that market and be able to serve it profitable. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. A market you can reach that you can't serve profitably is a market you shouldn't be in. A market you can't reach, you shouldn't even be talking about. Are you following me on this, yes or no? So once we understand well, why we must win, we need to get clear on where we can win. Then we come down to the strategy question.